What's up guys? It's been a long time on a video. I apologize. I've been behind at the shop and then with uh, the holidays, Christmas and New Year's, took some time off and I'm finally getting back uh, with some videos. Um, today's video is of one of my first uh, mechanical projects. This was probably boy, probably five or six years ago, and actually one of the first videos I posted on the channel um, was of my motorized bike project. And uh, back then, I had one of the Chinese bike kits. It was a Groovy Skyhawk uh, bike kit, um, chain-driven, two-stroke. And I rode that, it's hard to remember, but probably five or ten times uh, at the most without any issue. Um, two of the main issues that I dealt with were that the chain fell off all the time um, just because it was such a long run of chain all the way from where you see the mounting plate there where the engine would mount all the way back to the sprocket and the chain would fall off or had clutch issues. Um, one time the carburetor mount flange actually broke and the carburetor fell off while riding. Uh, but just a number of issues with that kit. Um, it's a cheap kit and I know some guys that have had good luck with it, but I did not. So, uh, back then I came up with the idea to add a jack shaft and shorten my chain quite a bit. Um, I actually had a, I'll show you here, like a four inch piece of square steel mounted right in here and this was before I had a welder so I actually had it U-bolted in there with two pillow block bearings and just a little piece of I think 5 8 steel rod that I had and I put a sprocket right here just to run a short chain from that groovy engine to a pulley over here and then I mounted my pulley uh, at the time it was on the other side of the bike uh, and my plan was just to run a short chain and then jack shaft it over to belt drive. Um, some issues with that were that I still had the same engine with issues. I still had a chain drive even though it was shorter and what was happening is the chain was pulling in this direction and the belt was also pulling in that direction so I could never keep the chain on because uh, all that torque was in the same direction and the chain fell off all the time. So I uh, kinda got sick of the project and got on to other things and finally years and years later uh, I've gotten back to it and there are quite a few changes that I made and I'm waiting on parts tomorrow to do further work with it but I wanted to show you what I came up with. So for starters, I got rid of the Groovy engine altogether. I still have it, but I'm just not using it. Uh, and I bought one of these universal motorized bicycle engine mounting uh, plates. And I can include a link to that. It's uh, about $27 on eBay. Um, and that has fit really well, actually. Um, a couple modifications I made just to make it fit better and what I was going for is maximum contact with the frame just for the most strength and one thing I had to do is notch right here on each side where that screw mounts to the plate I had to notch that and then I flipped this rear mount upside down and normally that mount would go like this but you don't have nearly as much contact so I flipped it and now it's fully in contact as well as the front is fully in contact. And as you can see it leans a little bit to the rear but I can fix that by slotting these front holes right here just a little bit further and that'll allow it to sit down. Um, but I'm waiting on an engine tomorrow and we'll see how all that fits so that might make a difference. So anyways I've added that I'm going to use a 79cc 3 horsepower Predator from Harbor Freight. Those are $100 and never go on sale like the 212cc does, but that's okay. Um, I didn't think the 212 would fit, 
with the limited space that I have. So I've got that three horse in the mail. Should be arriving tomorrow. Um, the one unfortunate thing with that is that with the counterclockwise uh, crankshaft rotation, I've got to have the crankshaft on this side of the bike, which I would call the driver side of the bike, so that it rotates this way and our wheel goes forward. But what that means is that the cylinder on the engine will be leaning to the back rather than nicely to the front. So the fitment might be an issue, but we'll find out tomorrow. So I've got that coming. Uh, way back when I had the jack shaft, I got this pulley at Orschlin, or Tractor Supply in some areas, and just kind of guessed on the size, so we'll see how the gear ratio works out. But the only thing I had to do there is I actually got pretty lucky with this. I drilled mounting holes to use my existing mount that came with the Groovy kit. And you can also buy these mounts just by themselves for a couple dollars. Uh, and I just drilled holes in it to match those bolts and mount the pulley up where the sprocket was originally. So we'll see how that goes tomorrow as well. Um, I got this. I think this kickstand is boy go fast. Uh, that's also what the mounting plate was, but you can find these on uh, eBay as well just for probably 20 or 30 dollars it's hard to remember but the advantage to that is that uh, it keeps your bike standing up straight I'm thinking with all the weight of that it's like a 35 pound engine if you were to lean it over on a kickstand it would fall over um, one other advantage to this is if you adjust it properly you can run it uh, on the stand so um, meaning for testing purposes or just to let the bike idle, you can let it sit up like this and the tire will spin without taking off. So that's nice. I uh, also got new tires a while back. Um, these are a really wide kind of balloon style black tire and they're a lot tougher than any of the other tires I've seen. They're made by Hutchinson and I got those at Target. I think they were about $20 a piece. So we've got that. Um, other modifications, uh, I'll just go over. I've probably went over these years ago, but for those of you that haven't seen the video, or I uh, actually had a series of three videos, but uh, I got this Monarch Springer front end. Get the camera to focus. This was also an eBay purchase, and I think it's unavailable nowadays, but you might be able to find it. That was actually about a $120 front end. Uh, back in, this was probably 2011. Um, a couple modifications I had to make to that were originally you weren't able to tighten it down far enough to match this headset um, on this particular bike or head tube. So we had to thread um, at a bike shop, take a big die and thread this center tube so that this nut could tighten down far enough to get you a nice tight fit. So that was one thing. Also, I robbed this headset off of kind of a race style bike and that really dropped my bars down compared to the original which went up like this and just looked kind of dorky. So it's a lot sleeker right now. Um, these are the original bars that I modified with kind of this drop down look. And I have these homemade clamps they're actually called a Flanders clamp, um, but you're unable to find those. They're in use on the Kiwi Indian motorcycles, um, but I wasn't able to find those. So these are actually a conduit wall mount clamp, and I've got two of them back to back with just a threaded stud in the middle there, and then welded it. Kind of a messy weld back when I was uh, inexperienced. but. Anyways, I have those on both sides. Um, this is the clutch lever from the original Groovy kit. And now that I will have a centrifugal clutch, and I can show you that in a second, uh, I won't be needing that. So I'll probably use that for my brake lever. And that brings me to this uh, brake setup that I'm working on. Uh, we'll see if that works. It's kind of just a... Uh, 
bunch of different pieces that I'm putting together and if it does work I'll show you how I did it. If not, I think I'm going to end up going with a disc brake either in the front or the rear um, because I've gotten rid of my pedals so I no longer have a coaster brake. Uh, moving along to the headlight, this is a new old stock Hawthorne bicycle headlight. See there, uh, I got that years ago and then just took a piece of angle iron, drilled it to mount, and then I've got a just a split collar there, a shaft collar, uh, and that holds it in place. Um, other things, I've got a mini bike gas tank. I think this came off of a rep, vintage rep uh, mini bike. And then this is actually a belt, just like a dress belt for for your pants flipped inside out and cut that to size and then mounted it in between the seat springs there and that's held tight up against the rear fender here I also modified the seat post this was way back and uh, just cut that off and then welded it at the angle and then flipped my seat mount upside down just to get it even lower so that lays back the seat kind of vintagey looking. Um, one other thing I'm planning to do and I can show you a cardboard cutout example of this. I don't have the sheet metal cut yet but I've got a an idea for a tank just to hide any of my electronics or I could even hide a tool bag in there or whatever I wanted to do but um, this would sit, oh, race cycle there. This would sit like this, and then I would drill a few holes and run a threaded rod through both sides, and then I've got some brass wing nuts, and that'll just wing nut on each side and make it look like it has a tank, but really there won't be anything in there, so that'll be kind of neat. Uh, I'll show you this clutch that I just got in the mail today. And I think this is the only style of pulley clutch available. It's a Max Torque brand, uh, 5 8 shaft to match that Harbor Freight engine. And that'll sit about here and then run a belt back. Um, one issue that I foresee is that my crankshaft is actually going to sit out too far to line up with the belt. If that's the case, we'll add a jack shaft to move that over. But, uh, now that I have a welder and greater abilities, that shouldn't be too big of a problem. So, we'll see what ends up happening with that. But, just wanted to give you an update, and if I get a bunch done tomorrow, uh, I'll have another video, and try to get back on track with at least a weekly video, I would hope. So, um, hopefully this is informational. And I'll include links to the pulley and the engine mount and the engine. Um, any other parts that I can find, I'll include those in the description. So be sure to like and subscribe. I really appreciate you watching. And I'll see you on the next video.